Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to this service of Holy Eucharist for this Sunday, the Feast of Christ the King, or the Reign of Christ. Everything you need is in the bulletin, and the hymns are in the blue hymn book, so we'll follow along with those. Our first hymn for this morning is number 393, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Please stand as you are able and let us sing together. You who are, who were, who are to come, 
before whose judgment all that is not love fades away. Save us from the violence that clings to claim our hearts so that we may hear a different voice that belongs to you in truth. Through Jesus Christ, the wounded King of all. Let us be seated for the reading from God's Word. First, first the song, and then the reading of the oh. Revelation. That's okay. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Maybe it's, it's, okay. Okay. it's okay. We'll just do it that way. Psalm 93. I will read the light print and you can respond in the bold. You, O oh God, are sovereign. You have put on splendid apparel. You have put on your apparel and girded yourself with strength. You have made the whole world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O oh God. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, mightier is our God who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness adorns your house forever and forever. Glory to God, our Creator, to God's most holy word, and to the Spirit in dwelling, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able and let us sing Alleluia. We sing your praises. Jesus answered, 
My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The waters have lifted up. Oh God, the waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. In another translation of Psalm 93, it says, the flood, the flood, the flood. This time, last week, it was pouring rain. You remember, you were here in the church, it was pounding on the roof and it was everywhere. I don't think I quite understood what was happening or what was going to happen. Our house woke up on Monday morning without power, but that was the least of what was going on. Do you remember last week I sang, the storm is passing over, and I really believed and still believe that it was. But the storm took with it animals, more animals than I can imagine, and people. And up the Fraser Canyon, the destruction is beyond belief. Our sister Melanie De Silva, an Anglican laywoman, who had worked for years as an archivist in our diocese and then was working for National Reconciliation, lived in Lytton before it was burned this summer and lives in the Fraser Canyon still and her reports are chilling. The storm is passing over. So I have a question. What does being a Christian have to do with socks and underwear? <laughs> socks and underwear and our faith. Keep you warm. Anyway. Keep you warm while you're in church, right? In wool socks especially. We'll get to that answer. But I think the biggest question that we are left with after this week is what are we going to do? What are we going to do? As Christians, what are we going to do? If we look at the world and ask WWJD, that might be the first step. W W J D. What would Jesus do? Remember those bracelets that had uh, that on? Hi, Marina. Did you ever have one of those bracelets? You don't have to confess. <laughs> but let's try. Let's think. If you shut your eyes with me for a minute and think, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus have us do? What would Jesus' answer be to our present circumstances? Today, we heard in the Gospel of John the pinnacle, or the height, I believe, almost, of our story. We hear about Pilate. 
Pilate, of course, is the representative of the Roman Empire. And Pilate and Jesus are having it out. And Jesus, of course, is an absolute nobody. We have the Roman Empire and an absolute nobody. Now, did you hear the questions? Or if you go home and read them again later, do you hear, more importantly, the answers or the non-answers that Jesus gives? Jesus is very annoying. <laughs> he never answers the questions in a straight way. He answers the questions like a good teacher with another question that's to invite us to think, to throw over the traditional way of thinking and being and doing. So the first question Pilate asks is, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answers, not yes or no, but who asked you? Did others, or are you the one answering, asking this question? And Pilate also replies with a question, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. He's ridding himself of any responsibility for what is happening. What have you done? He asks Jesus. And Jesus doesn't answer. Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. And so Pilate says, aha, so you are a king. And Jesus says, you say that I am a king. So what are we supposed to think? Who are we supposed to believe? Is Jesus a king or is he not a king? What is the root or the heart of his authority and his power? Does he have the most guns? Does he have the biggest gun of all? Does he have the most money? Is he the most handsome? Is he the latest star? A celebrity with the most following? Of course not. Yet Jesus is the source of all life and all love. Jesus is the source of all real authority and real power. Jesus is the Alpha at the beginning and the Omega at the end. This Jesus of ours overturned the tables in the temple, do you remember? and then went on to overturn the whole world. Might doesn't work. It may appear to work, but in the end, it breaks things down and doesn't build them up. One country this past 30, 40, 50 years has shown us Afghanistan. Did it work when the Russians were there or when the Americans were there? Did it work with more guns and more guns and more guns to get what we thought we wanted? Of course not. And again and again, the church in its history has confused its mission. It has aligned itself with the wrong kind of power and been afraid of Jesus' power. It has aligned itself with wealth and might and, yes, even violence. So what is our task then as Christians as we come to the end of this year 
this Christian year, this last Sunday of this Christian year, what are we to do? Can we pray hard together about these things? Can we look together for what is true? What is truth? asked Pontius Pilate and did not stay for an answer. Can we stay for the answer? Can we seek together what is needed in this world for the kingdom of God, which is right here already, to break out among us? Can we put on the full armor of God, which is not armor, but which is love. And now I'll get to those socks and underwear. Yesterday, actually Friday afternoon as I was heading out, I got a message saying that there were some migrant workers in the valley who had lost everything. There were 43 men and seven women and seven children who had lost their homes and trailers. They had lost their belongings and they had lost all their work. They had nothing left except the clothes they had when they escaped the flood. A Christian camp took them in, and they were sleeping in those, can you imagine if you go to Christian camp, imagine the bunks where they're sleeping. But they had nothing. And could anyone out there in the inter, what's called the metaverse now, the, uh, could, could we help them? And I wrote back and always do. Yes, of course, what do they need? And we have food, we have bags and bags of sugar, we have rice, we have lentils, and we have clothes. So Donna was a little bit annoyed. You're watching this later, Donna. Thank you for getting through your annoyance because we raided the thrift store and Lauren helped. Thank you, Lauren. We got bags and bags of sweaters and t-shirts and pants and even a couple of pairs of cowboy boots, I know they're gonna be really happy about those. But when it came to the socks and the underwear in the thrift store, <laughs> not that great. So I put it out on my Facebook page that we needed these things, and within a few hours, about six or seven or eight people had sent me the total of about $700. And the woman who had sent me the first text, I texted her this and she burst into tears on text, she phoned me, and she couldn't believe it. She had spent $200 of her own money buying hot sauce and other things to make the Mexican and Guatemalan farm workers happy, but she didn't know where she was gonna get some more money to get them first clothes that we got, but then the socks and the underwear. So I said, I, it was going on all day between us. She said, I'm going to go to Costco and I'm going to see what I can do. And she, she sent me the list. She spent, at first there were $400. She spent $399. And then I said, we've got some more. So she went out and spent another $200. And now I haven't told her yet. We just got another $100 this night. And then another friend texted me. She said, I know. I'm going to call Costco and ask them to just give us some socks and underwear. And she did. And she said, well, if you write the letter on your letterhead with your charitable number, they, they said yes. Huh? So I said, oh my goodness, I'm so busy. She said, oh, I'll write it. Can you send me your letterhead? So I said, oh, sure. So I sent her the letterhead, the letter's in, and we'll see what Costco comes up with. So for me, this was the answer. It's not the whole answer. But we're a little church. We're not going to have the whole answer to the whole problem. But the fact that we're sending a whole carload of clothes and toys and food and 
$700 worth of socks and underwear. I think WWJD. I think that's what Jesus would do. Socks and underwear. Thanks be to God. Let us stand as we are able and say the words of the Apostles' Creed. Mm -hmm. Let us confess the faith of our baptism, the faith we share with all the saints, past, present, and future. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now please stand, sit, or kneel as is your custom for the prayers of the people. And remember 
dead, we pray for Graham, Esther, and Martin. And I invite us all to say aloud or in our hearts the names of those for whom we are individually praying. Loving God, you have taught us that the power of your heart is greater than the power of wealth and might. Hear us as we pray for the fulfillment of your reign. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our King. To him be glory and power forever. Join me in the confession and absolution. Happy are those whose sins are forgiven, whose wrongs are pardoned. I will confess my sins to the Lord. I will not conceal my wrongdoing. God forgives and heals us. We need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us. Some escape us. Some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve you. God forgives you. Forgive others and forgive yourself. Please stand as you are able. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with each other. And our offertory hymn is number 61. Yes, you can hug if you're in your own bubble. <laughs> <laughs> number 61, as we gather.
together the prayer over the gifts. Eternal God, by your grace you have raised us up and enthroned us with Christ in the heavenly realms. Receive all we offer you this day and lead us in those good works for which you have created us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks for grace. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom you have made us your holy people. You renew that mystery in bread and wine and nourish us to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the holy people who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink this, you do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, holy and gracious God, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. 
Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your reign of justice and peace. These are the gifts of God, and we are the people of God. Thanks be to God. As has been our custom, uh, since uh, we've been able to meet again, I will bring communion to you if you choose to receive. If you choose to have just a blessing, you may ask for a blessing as well.
Let us say together the prayer after communion. Please stand with your able. God of David, you have made us a royal priesthood in the kingdom of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Make known his victory through us, we pray, so that all the world may see his light. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated again for a moment. Maureen, you can't escape yet. <laughs> I need Maureen. <laughs> she doesn't know why, maybe she forgot, and Bruce. So I have a few announcements and then I need Maureen and Bruce. Um, a few things, I'll try to do them chronologically. At 2.30, if you're able, uh, please join online for a national moment of prayer led by our primate, Linda, what's Linda's last name? Nickel. Nickel, thank you. <laughs> um, and, and our um, national Anglican indigenous Archbishop Mark McDonald praying for British Columbia. So please join us. 2.30, and I sent the links in the email got the email. And then at 4 o'clock, we're doing our sacred singing circle. We're doing it later today because Patty, the reason you haven't seen Patty at all is because she decided to run a choir for the month of November. Um, and it's at 1 o'clock on Sunday afternoons, but she finds herself too frazzled to get here and then rush off to run her choir in downtown Vancouver. So um, join us at 4 p.m. online. Again, I sent the link. And if you didn't get it, then please see me. And Saturday made us. We will be gathering to celebrate and to mourn and to send off in the best way possible our beloved friend, the Reverend Graham Brownlee, husband of Venerable Mavis Brownlee here, and everyone is welcome 2 p.m. on Saturday at St. John's Shaughnessy. Also, see me if you don't know exactly how to get there or whether you're allowed to come. I believe everyone's invited. So we continue to hold you in prayer, Mavis. And last but not least, we have to do something fun and a little odd that I don't know if we've done here recently, ever. Do you guys remember? No, I don't. We have to do, so you know when somebody gets married, the priest has to say, does anybody know of a reason why these two people shall not get married? And everyone trembles for a few seconds and waits, and then you go, phew, and then you get married. Well, also, when there's going to be an ordination, you have to say, does anybody here know why these people should not get ordained? And then we wait in terror, or at least Neil waits in terror. And then Martha waits in terror, although she's not here, to hear if anybody says, and uh, I don't know if ever in history anybody has ever said anything, but it's a illegal requirement. It's called the sequis, and I have never been in charge of one, so here I am, and I'd like to have the wardens come and read the sequis. And maybe Bruce can read one, and then we'll have Maureen read the other. Yeah, this is where you can. Notice is hereby given that Mar Martha Mary Cameron, resident in the parish of St. Barnabas, New Westminster, intends to offer herself as a candidate for the holy office of deacon at the ensuing ordination by the Right Reverend John R. Stevens. And if any person knows any just cause or impediment, why she ought not to be admitted to the said office of deacon, they are hereby requested to declare the same to me or to signify the same forthwith to the Right Reverend John R. Stevens. Drum roll. <laughs> nope. Okay. All right. Phew. Come on down. Notice is hereby given that Neil Bruce Seedhouse, 
resident in the parish of St. Barnabas, New Westminster, intends to offer himself as a candidate for the holy office of deacon at the ensuing ordination by the Reverend, the Right Reverend John R. Stevens. And if any person knows any just cause or impediment why he ought not to be admitted to the said office of deacon, they are hereby requested to declare the same to me or to signify the same forthwith to the Right Reverend John R. Stevens. Thank you. Hearing no objections, I think we should give Neil yes. and Barbara a round of applause. Yay! It's been a long and winding road. <laughs> and a surprise, even, that, that Neil is here with us, but a, a great blessing. And we look forward and invite everyone who is able to go on the 4th of December to Christ Church Cathedral at 10.30. Get there early so you can get a good seat. And uh, it's a lot of fun, especially if you're not going to ordain. That is really nerve-wracking. But it's really great to go and remember that we're not just a little church here in New Westminster. We are part of a great big worldwide church, and this is an opportunity to live that and to celebrate that. So everyone is welcome to come and join and pray with our two candidates. And I couldn't be happier and more, more excited about the ministry opportunities that are coming to us now. So thank you, Neil, and thank you, Martha, who I'm sure will be watching this later. Martha will then return to us on the Sunday, the 5th of December, so that will be exciting as well. And other announcements? Anybody have anything that I should remember? The no? only thing is church committee meeting next Sunday. Yeah. It's still yes. Okay. Yeah. So. so anybody on church committee, hereby be warned. <laughs> church committee meeting 12 o'clock next Sunday, not this Sunday. And yeah, we'll be starting Advent next, next Sunday and four Sundays of Advent and then we'll be at Christmas. And we are doing the big, gigantic St. Barnabas Christmas meal on Christmas Day. Uh, that will be a takeaway again, as it was last year, unfortunately. We won't be able to have the big Christmas meal in the hall, but we are looking for volunteers, so please see me, and uh, we'll write your name on the list to help out that day. So thank you, everyone. And uh, Fritz says, well, and let us conclude this service Bruce is trying to sneak by. I'll say the blessing and then the final hymn is number 502. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. 502. Oh yes, coffee over in the hall, everyone. Coffee and tea and goodies. <laughs>
in love and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Um, coffee and tea over in the hall.